Hello, hello. What is up, everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and guess what's back tonight? Gotham. Yes, Gotham has returned. I almost forgot that Gotham even existed, that it was even a thing until I started seeing commercials for it. And I said, oh yeah, that show. We're in the middle of season three. This is episode 15 entitled How the Riddler Got His Name. And the end of the last episode where we laughed, last left off, Edward Nigma killed the penguin. Supposedly killed the penguin. How many people out there really thought that penguin was dead? Let's be honest. So we see Edward Nigma at the beginning. He's killing off people. He's going on a killing spree. Killing these really intelligent people, giving them riddles, and if they get them wrong, he kills them. He's killed up to like six people, I believe it is. And you see that he's taking these pills, these drugs, so that he can hallucinate Penguin. He can hallucinate Oswald Cobblepot, and he's having conversations with him, talking to him. It's, it's I think, partly because of his guilt over killing him, but also because uh, Oswald helped him become the Riddler. So he almost needs that person there so that he can continue doing this. Now, I will admit there was a part of me that somewhat enjoyed seeing Nigma do what he was doing, uh, take all these people and present these riddles in front of them because he was showing how, how intelligent he was, how much more intelligent he was than everybody else. I even loved how frustrated he got when everybody would get his riddles wrong. But ultimately, this episode, it's, it's what I have a problem with this show. I've said it before, I know some of you are sick of me saying this over and over again when it comes to Gotham, because the people who like Gotham, you're probably saying, dude, get over it. But I'm going to say that this show sucks without Batman. If you did the same exact episode of Edward Nigma becoming the Riddler and doing all these things that he was doing, but if Batman was in the picture, then I would love it. I would say this is an awesome origin story for the Riddler, especially if by the end of it, he's, he's desperate to find somebody that is of equal or maybe even superior intelligence that can hang toe to toe with him with his riddles. If, if this all built towards him finding out that Batman is his intellectual equal, then like how fascinating would that be? How great would that be? But no, Bruce Wayne is like 14 years old still. So none of this is going to go on. We see him wear the green suit and the green hat. And this actor looks the part. I don't have a problem with his acting or anything like that. I just feel like we're at the point now where almost every character is their villain form before Batman is here. Pretty soon we're going to bring Harvey Dent back and have half of his face get burnt off because why not? This show doesn't know what the hell else to do. If they don't do a time jump and have Bruce Wayne older and have Batman actually exist here, then this is all pointless. There's even a moment where Enigma almost decides that Jim Gordon is going to be his arch enemy, his arch rival, his equal. And it's like, this doesn't work. Having Nigma do this to Gordon instead of Batman isn't that interesting because if Gordon can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, if Gordon can stop him on his own, then what the fuck is the point of Batman in a few years? This, it's like the writers, the producers aren't thinking how any of this makes sense to the mythology chronologically. I'm not even saying that origins or how things play out have to be like the comics. I'm just saying that this doesn't make sense if we're supposed to believe that someday, one day, Batman's going to arrive and save the day and stop all these villains. If they've already existed some 10, 15, 20 years before he shows up. Anyways, so we see Harvey Bullock and Lucius Fox. They're investigating these these crimes. And I did like Harvey Bullock. I enjoy him being the active captain or whatever he is. Because he's incompetent. But this actor is, is, is very amusing to watch. Uh, the scene where he gets 
uh, kidnapped and tied up. It's like, okay, so he's really incompetent now. And Lucius Fox is the one going back and forth with Nigma again. I don't care about Lucius Fox going up against Penguin toe to toe, especially when you prove and you establish that he's not going to get these riddles right. Okay, he got one right out of three. And then later on in the episode, Nigma is in the back of his car. He could kill him at any moment. But no, he just stops to tell him about the penguin and everything that he's been doing and how he feels. And he just knocks him out. Explain how, logically, in the story, why would he not kill Lucius Fox after telling him everything, after Lucius got two out of the three riddles wrong? He killed off those six other people. Why? Because they're nobodies, right? They don't mean anything to the mythology, to, to the later story. They're not characters who have to live on according to the lore. So they could all die, but Lucius Fox or Bullock, no, they have to live for some convoluted reason. Doesn't make sense with everything Nigma had been doing throughout the episode, but Lucius Fox survives. We see Jim Gordon, he's off, he's away, meeting with his Uncle Frank. And I didn't really care about all of this either. You find out that Uncle Frank is a part of the Court of Owls, and he's trying to recruit Jim Gordon, but he's doing it in a way where he's telling Gordon that they were behind them killing his father, and so he wants the two of them to go in there, infiltrate, and, and destroy the group. But you can tell he's lying. He's clearly lying. And then he meets back up with the woman from the Owls, and, and they're scheming and planning, and I just... As much as I was looking forward to the Court of Owls and seeing what they were going to do with it, I am severely disappointed with what I'm seeing so far. Especially if Gordon is dumb enough to fall for this. Not only that, but you see that they brought back the clone Bruce Wayne. One of the stupidest plots I think I've ever seen on this show, even just in general. Whenever shows do a clone plot, it's like, wow, we're reaching the bottom of the barrel for material, for plots and, and situations, and just stupidity. The level of stupidity, you see that at first, Alfred gives Bruce Wayne a note that we think is from Selena, that she wants to meet with him. Bruce, at first, doesn't want to, doesn't want to give her the time of day, but then uh, Alfred convinces him to meet with her. He goes to meet with her. You find out that she didn't write the note. Bruce gets beat up by these kids and then beats them back up, which I liked, especially because Alfred was training Bruce earlier and Bruce was distracted and Alfred was trying to tell him that you need to be able to do this even if you're distracted, no matter what. Moments like that I like. Very few and very rare are there good moments like that on the show, but that was one. And then even Bruce getting back up and beating the kids up I like, but then they just cut. They didn't even show the aftermath of the scene. Didn't even show if he had a cool one-liner to say before he left or how he laughed or did he just leave them all unconscious and laying. We don't know. Because the next time we see him, he's in the alley and he's cleaning off his face until the clone shows up. And it, Bruce should have been smarter than this. He sits there to have a conversation with this clone. The last time you talked to him, you told him to get the hell out of the city. So if he's back now, and if he's dressed like you, what the fuck do you think is gonna happen, Bruce Wayne? You're supposed to be smarter than this. I know you're a kid, but still, you're a fucking idiot because you've been kidnapped by this weird cult group before. Maybe not them specifically, but a group before. So now he gives him a tranquilizer, knockout juice, or whatever the hell it is. And again, it's stupid. If the Court of Owls want to use this clone Bruce Wayne to replace Bruce, pretend to be Bruce and do whatever they're going to do, wouldn't you just kill the real Bruce Wayne? Just kill him, get rid of him, and replace him? Again, I know because of the nature of who he is, they're not going to really kill him, but it just, in the story, it doesn't make sense why these characters don't get killed off at certain points in time. It makes the villains look completely inept and idiotic, and I can't take them seriously. So Bruce is in a cell over all the way in Alaska or the Arctic or whatever the fuck he is. And according to the previews, he's going to get trained by some guy. What the fuck is going on? They don't know what to do with Bruce Wayne. That's the problem. They don't know what the hell they're doing. They're running around in the writer's room, uh, just, just twiddling their 
thumbs and, and spinning in their chairs because they're confused. They're lost. This episode sucked. It sucked. It had its moments. I like the moment of Nygma getting rid of the pills and leaving the docks with the green suit on. Like I like it as a standalone thing, but in the context of this prequel show with Bruce Wayne being a fucking kid, it is, this is stupid. This is stupid, especially because Nygma now revealed himself to the public. He's wanted, but like, what is he going to do now? Where is he going to go now? Where, where can he go now? Of course, you see that Penguin is still alive. Oswald was being, he was found by Poison Ivy, who she too is also grown up and now just Poison Ivy, I guess, even though she still calls herself Ivy Pepper. God damn it. So he's gonna, I, I'm curious about how they're gonna handle Enigma versus Penguin. Like the two villains going at it toe to toe, trying to kill each other. That's gonna be interesting. I might not have liked how they got there with Oswald being in love with him and all that was weird, but we're finally at a point where maybe they can save something out of this. Two of my favorite characters on the show, hopefully they don't destroy them. Like they've destroyed everything else, virtually everything else on this show. Clearly, I did not like this episode. I think the season has been terrible. All the stuff with Gordon and what's her face, uh, Lee, just all of that back and forth was was terrible. <sighs> Will it get better? I doubt it. But let me know in the comments below. Did you like this episode? Are you enjoying the season? Am I being too harsh on it? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later.